talk a lot about the triumph of uh, politics over policy, which you call a distinguishing feature of the modern Congress. And you point out that, in your opinion, and I think your opinion is well taken, this causes a lot of very competent people to say, what, me run for Congress? Not a chance, you know. Well, can you elaborate on that for us a little bit? It's a national tragedy, and I don't know what to do about it. You know, the founding fathers expected that people like them were going to be the ones who would take part in this new government that they were creating. And indeed, a number, a large percentage of the signers of the Constitution and the Declaration of Independence ended up members of the House and Senate. Yeah. Uh, this was seen to be something that good citizens should do, and they did it. And for a long time, this, this tradition survived. Of course, we got a lot of bums running for Congress over the whole of the United States. We shouldn't get romantic about our long past. It has been far from ideal. But there was this tradition, and even in our year's lifetime and mine, we had people, I think often, of Phil Hart of Michigan, the uh, Senate office building now named for him, one of the most distinguished senators of my lifetime, a professor, a very serious intellect, but a wonderful guy with a common touch, too, who's a very good politician. Phil Hart, were he to be reborn now, in my opinion, would not run for the United States Senate. It's just not appealing. These guys have to spend a day or two a week, every week, on the telephone, begging strangers for money, as demeaning an activity as you and I can imagine. Uh, they have to put up with this all-out partisan warfare all the time. Uh, they're always looking for sound bites and you know, think quick gimmicks to get attention. Very few, very few serious students of policy, economics policy, domestic policy, foreign policy, in the Congress today. I write in this book that by my own calculation, the number of people in the House and Senate combined who really understood the issues of financial regulation in the Dodd-Frank bill, the number of people could be easily fit on the roster of a Major League Baseball team. That's 25 people yeah. out of 535. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But that's it. That's all that we had for expertise among members. So this is, it's just a different kind of a way of life, and it attracts a different kind of person. Yeah. You talked about uh, Corker uh, reading books. You've got this wonderful comment here about Dick Durbin, the senator from Illinois, who's uh, got a very unusual habit. He reads books on American history. Yeah. <laughs> True. This excerpt is brought to you by the Massachusetts School of Law, the leader of reform in legal education and the leader in multimedia education for the public. To view the full interview and for a full listing of MSL's programs, log on to mslaw.edu.